Archaeologists reveal an amazing discovery inside the Grand Canyon. First of all, as they found out, there's the Grapevine Ruin, an old site that reveals ancient people that lived in the Grand Canyon. Second, archaeologists discovered ancient drawings and glyphs, which tell a completely different story how this area was created between 1900 and 1100 BC. Finally, inside the Grand Canyon, ancient human footprints were found near the Colorado River. These footprints are over 12,000 years old, and scientists finally figured out who were these people that lived in the USA inside the Grand Canyon 12,000 years ago. These are some amazing discoveries inside the Grand Canyon, so let's explain them. The Grand Canyon is very deep, and a deep canyon made by the Colorado River. The canyon is about 277 miles long and up to 18 miles wide. And one of the most significant discoveries inside the Grand Canyon is the Grapevine Ruin, discovered in 1932, which serves as a testament to the rich cultural tapestry of the American Southwest. In 1932, a team of explorers led by seasoned archaeologists and canyon enthusiasts stumbled upon the Grapevine Ruin during an expedition into the deeper, less frequented parts of the Grand Canyon. Named for its proximity to Grapevine Creek, the ruin was an archaeological gold mine. Experts think that an unidentified culture produced the illustrations between 1900 and 1100 BC. The symbols are located within the canyon and around the Spirit Mountain, although they are spread throughout the area. The densest collection of these glyphs is in a section called Christmas Tree Pass. This pass houses approximately 700 carvings and rock shelters. While the interpretation of the glyphs is still uncertain, many think that the drawings represent a story of creation. The site might have been viewed as a holy place by the native cultures of the area. The discovery of Grapevine Ruin led to the intensified archaeological interest in the Grand Canyon. The ruin prompted questions about how these ancient civilizations were able to survive and thrive in the challenging canyon environment and what factors led to their eventual disappearance. In addition, one more enigma inside the Grand Canyon is the discovery of the split twig figurines, artifacts that offer a rare peek into the spiritual and symbolic practices of indigenous societies. In the recesses of several caves within the Grand Canyon, Archaeologists during the 1970s and 80s stumbled upon delicate figurines fashioned from split willow twigs. These small figures, often shaped to resemble animals like deer or bighorn sheep, are intricately designed, with their twigs meticulously twisted and looped to form the body, legs, and sometimes even antlers or horns. Radiocarbon dating suggests that these figurines were made over 2,000 years ago by ancient indigenous peoples. The exact purpose of these split twig figurines remains a subject of debate among researchers. Some believe they might have been used in ceremonial or ritualistic contexts, perhaps as offerings to deities or spirits associated with the animals they represent. Given their location in remote, inaccessible caves, it's possible that these sites held spiritual significance for their creators, making them ideal places for sacred ceremonies or rituals. Others propose that the figurines had a more pragmatic purpose, potentially serving as toys or teaching aids for children. Yet given the effort required to produce them and their less consistent placement in scheduled areas, this theory seems less likely. Another perspective is that these figures could be symbolic representations of clan or tribal totems, embodying the characteristics and qualities of the animals they portray. This would tie into broader indigenous traditions where animals hold specific meanings and are believed to be guides, protectors, or symbols of particular traits. Regardless of their exact purpose, the discovery of the split twig figurines sheds light on the complexity and sophistication of the prehistoric societies that created them. They are testament to a deep-rooted cultural tradition and the ability of these ancient peoples to express themselves artistically using the natural materials at their disposal. Additionally, their careful preservation in caves speaks to a reverence for the objects themselves, suggesting that they held significant meaning for their creators. Also, the discovery of ancient human footprints inside the Grand Canyon into the mudflats of the Colorado River in 2011 added yet another intriguing chapter to the storied history of this landmark. These footprints, believed to be over 12,000 years old, not only reshaped our understanding of human habitation in the region, but also provided a tangible link to the distant past. Before the discovery of these footprints, the prevailing notion was that human presence in the Grand Canyon was relatively recent, at least in terms of the extensive timeline of human history. The footprints impressively preserved in the mudflats challenged this notion. Radiocarbon dating techniques and sediment analysis suggest that these footprints dated back to the late Pleistocene, a time when mammoths and giant sloths roamed North America. The footprints offered insights beyond mere dating. The way the footprints were laid out hinted at patterns of movement, 
possibly suggesting hunting or gathering activities. Some tracks were of individuals, while others were of small groups, painting a tableau of daily life for these ancient humans. The presence of other animal tracks nearby further enriched this narrative, hinting at the biodiversity of the region and the potential interactions between humans and wildlife. The discovery in the Grand Canyon forced archaeologists and anthropologists to reevaluate previous theories of human migration and habitation in the region. If humans were present in the canyon over 12,000 years ago, it implies that they were more adaptive and versatile than previously believed. It's a testament to human resilience and adaptability given the challenging terrains and climate conditions of the Grand Canyon. The footprints also prompted questions about the cultural and spiritual lives of these early inhabitants. Were there ritualistic or ceremonial activities associated with a river in the canyon? How did they view this majestic landscape, and what myths or stories might they have crafted around it? For indigenous communities in the region, such as the Hopi, Navajo, and Sunni, the discovery might not have been as surprising. Oral traditions and ancestral stories have long spoken of their deep roots in the land, of lives lived in harmony with nature. The footprints serve as physical evidence to back these narratives, further validating the profound connections between these tribes and the Grand Canyon. Furthermore, the Grand Canyon's majestic cliffs and caverns yielded yet another layer of mystery, a series of symbols carved into its rocks dating back over a millennium. The discovery of these symbols inside the Grand Canyon has rekindled curiosity, speculation, and academic interest, underscoring the canyon's rich history and its connection with ancient peoples. In 2017, a group of explorers while navigating one of the lesser-traveled paths of the Grand Canyon stumbled upon symbols etched into the rock surfaces. These weren't mere scratches or natural markings. They were intricate designs, each with its own unique pattern. Given the canyon's size and often inaccessible terrain, it's no surprise that such treasures can remain hidden for centuries. The question that immediately arose was, who carved these symbols and why? Archaeologists and historians were quick to descend upon the site, hoping to decipher the origins and meanings of the symbols. Preliminary dating methods suggest that the carvings were over a thousand years old. This timeline coincided with the presence of indigenous tribes in the region, such as the ancestral Puebloans, who have left behind evidence of their existence in other parts of the southwestern U.S. Many theories have been put forward regarding the purpose and meaning of the symbols. Some believe that they may have been religious or spiritual in nature, possibly serving as a form of communication with the divine. Others speculate that they could have been used for astrological or calendrical purposes, marking significant celestial events or seasonal changes. Yet others posit that they might have functioned as territorial markers or signposts for travelers. One of the more promising avenues of investigation has been to compare the Grand Canyon symbols with known symbols and glyphs from other ancient cultures. For example, petroglyphs and pictographs from regions like Chaco Canyon or the petroglyphs at Newspaper Rock in Utah provide potential parallels. However, while there are similarities, the Grand Canyon symbols have so far resisted definitive interpretation. Their uniqueness might suggest a localized or specific cultural context which is yet to be fully understood. The discovery of these symbols reinforces the idea that the Grand Canyon was more than just a natural wonder to ancient peoples. It was a place of cultural and spiritual significance. The very act of carving symbols into rock indicates a deliberate intent to communicate, whether to fellow humans or to the cosmos. These symbols also serve as a poignant reminder of the deep-rooted connection between the indigenous peoples and the land. They invite modern viewers to reflect on the stories, traditions, and wisdom of civilizations long past and to consider the transient nature of our own imprint on the landscape. Moreover, one of the central themes in Grant Hancock's work is the idea that ancient civilizations possessed advanced knowledge and capabilities, much of which has been lost to time. He argues that there's evidence of a once great civilization that existed prior to currently accepted historical timelines, which was wiped out by a cataclysmic event. This idea can be applied to the Grand Canyon in the sense that there are claims and stories of ancient Egyptians or Asian artifacts found within its depths. Some speculate about lost caves filled with treasures and ancient tunnels, a testament to a past civilization's exploration or habitation of the region. Hancock often emphasizes that history as we know it might not be as complete or accurate as we believe. He suggests that there are many gaps, errors, or misinterpretations in the conventional historical narrative. The Grand Canyon, with its vastness and inaccessibility to many parts, holds many secrets. The idea that there might be more to discover about its history or its significance to ancient cultures aligns with Hancock's overall stance on hidden truths waiting to be unearthed. In his exploration of ancient sites, Hancock often delves into the sacred significance of geography. 
He argues that certain locations on Earth might have been deemed sacred or special by ancient civilizations due to their alignment with cosmic events or energies. The Grand Canyon, with its awe-inspiring landscape and spiritual significance for Native American tribes, could easily fit into this narrative. Its formations, geological wonders, and energy might be seen as more than just the product of erosion, but as a testament to its sacred value. That's it for today. Subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell.